Now what we wanna do is actually get the average rating for any given playlist. And that rating, of course, is coming from a generic foreign key. So the big question is, how do we actually go about doing this? Well, one of the easiest ways is to use the generic relation, much like we did with tags, but for now ratings. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's import our rating. So we'll do from ratings.models. We're gonna go ahead and import the rating. And we'll just set this as yet another field on our playlist. So ratings equals to the generic relation of ratings and related query name is still playlist, right? Those actually don't conflict with each other at all. Because if you remember the related query name was about the reverse relationship. So this item here or this item here. Cool. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and actually jump into the shell. So python manage.py shell. We're gonna import several things here. First off, we'll go ahead and do from django.contrib dot auth, we're gonna import the git user model. Then from playlists.models, we're gonna import the playlist. And then from ratings.models, we're gonna import the rating. And then I'll also do from django.db.models, we're gonna import a VG as in average. Okay, so first of all, we already have playlists or hopefully we do, so playlists Let's try that again. So QS equals to playlist objects.all and QS, there we go. So I do have some playlists in here already. The playlist itself doesn't actually matter that much. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and declare the user class. So get user equals to get user model and user.objects.all. Let's just make sure we have one and I do. So user.objects.first. So I now have the different playlists or a bunch of different playlists. So I'll just go ahead and see PLY object or PLY OBJ equals to that QS dot first. So now I'm gonna go ahead and create a rating. So rating dot objects dot create and the user being J, the playlist or the content object being PLY OBJ and then the value that I want it to be. So I know that it's either gonna be one, two, three, or four or five or none. This is not me testing this. This is actually setting some values. Uh, granted, I probably should use the choice field, but I'm gonna go ahead and do arbitrary numbers here. Oops, that should be content object, not content obj. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in some more. So five, one, one, two. Notice that this is the same user over and over again. Uh, so maybe in the long run, that's not necessarily what I want, but now I've got rating.objects.all. So I actually have ratings in here. So what I can do is I can actually calculate what the value is in aggregate of all of these ratings by doing rating.objects.aggregate and that AVG that we imported, uh, let's see, right here we can use average of the field that I want to average. And I hit enter and I should spell aggregate correctly. And there we go. So 2.666, that is my current value average. Not surprising. Now, if I actually updated it, let's add several more fives in here. A lot more fives. And now let's look at the average value with the correctly spelled aggregate, it went up a lot. Okay, but that's my entire ratings value. What about the actual project itself? How do I actually do this same aggregation on the project itself? Before I do that, I'm gonna just tell you how this sort of works under the hood. So if you look at the models, we got ratings here. We got a value, which is an integer field. That aggregate is going to look for this field because we called AVG on it of value, that actual field itself, right? So rating.objects.aggregate. Okay, so if this was something different like rating, then we would have to use that there. Now you can also be more explicit about what's sent back, right? So right here it says value underscore underscore average. We could change that from that to being just average and that would actually give us back average, which we could try out uh, like this. 
not to worry, we, we are gonna be adding these to the tests as reference if you're just following along. Uh, so now we see that there's an average. Now there's another thing that we can do is we can use uh, this exact same concept on a foreign key or a generic relation. So what that means is in our playlist, we have playlists.objects.all, and we'll go ahead and do first, and then ratings.all. Of course, that's going off of all those ratings I just created, right? So it's getting the very first object, that's just an object there. It's going off of generic relations.all, and that's it. So to do this same aggregate call, we can just run playlist dot objects dot filter now let's say id equals to one i think that's the correct id and it sure enough it is and then i can now call dot aggregate aggregate and avg well, let's go ahead and just call value and hit enter i get this error cannot resolve value into field here are all the choices of our fields well, of course it's not value. It should be the actual field itself, which in our case is ratings. That was the name that we gave it of a generic value right there. So I call ratings and then I use two underscores to get the field value that's inside of that model, which of course that field value is values. And now I can hit enter on that and that actually gives me that average value it's really not surprising that this value is the same because they are all on the same thing. So all of my rating objects at this point are all on that first product object. So this of course is something we want to test against. But before I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take that playlist and I'm gonna define get rating on it. And what this is gonna do is it's going to give me a rating based off of this playlist object here. So what I want to return is playlist.objects.filter id equals to self.id, then dot aggregate and avg of the rating and the value, or ratings rather, and the value. Now this exact same thing would work if this was a many-to-many -many field or if it was a foreign key, we would use, we could also use a rating underscore set, depending on how you actually declare those relationships. But in this case, I have it in as ratings, so I can actually run this. And let's make sure that we're importing that. So from django.db.models import avg. Now there's another one called max, which would give you the top rated item here, which might be something that we want. So we should call this get average rating and you could maybe even call it like get spread, get rating spread. Let's actually change this to get rating AVG. So spread being the max is equal to that max argument that we had in there. And then we can also do the min argument as well. And then we would say min equals to min of that same exact value. Okay, so let's let's go back into tests now to actually test these things out. Or actually, before we go into tests, let's save all this and just go into the shell, so Python managed py shell, and then from playlists models, we're going to import the playlist model itself. And so I'll go ahead and get my first object, which was playlist.objects.first obj.get rating average, hit enter, it gives me that rating average. Uh, and then I can also get the rating spread, so obj.get rating spread, and I get a min value and a max value. Okay, no surprising there, because uh, those are the choices. That's not surprising at all, uh, but it is possible that depending on the playlist you have, it never has a max of five or it never has a min, like nobody actually ever valued it at that. So you would kind of take those things into account. Now, could you combine these two things? Absolutely you can. Uh, you may or may not want to, to do that. In fact, what you'll probably want to have is, especially for the average rating, you're probably not going to want to actually calculate it every single time. But instead, when a rating is done on that content object, maybe you send a signal that allows for that 
to be calculating a brand new field. I'm not gonna be doing that, but that's a, that's a lot more steps that you need to do. Uh, but it is a good idea to have a rating average field in here that you would do models dot, you know, uh, float or decimal field, either one, um, and then actually set that rating average based off of this aggregation call. Because again, doing this aggregation call every single time will be computationally expensive. Okay, um, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and verify the average rating uh, inside of my tests. So going back into my ratings, let's go into tests here. Now what I wanna do is just make sure my average rating um, exists or is not none, essentially. So let's go ahead and import the average call. So from Django and .db.models, we're gonna import AVG, capital A, lowercase vg. And now we're gonna go ahead and test that aggregation. So test rating ag, and we'll go ahead and do a couple different ways on how to do this. So the first one being rating into objects dot aggregate and the average being the value. So item one, and I'm gonna go ahead and say average equals to that. This will send back a actual um, dictionary value so I can call the value that I set there. And this will give me what that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and self dot assert true item one is, is not none, or actually we should probably assert uh, is not none instead of true. Okay. And also let's go ahead and do one more assert true. So assert true and this should be item one is greater than zero. Let's try this out. So we'll exit out of here. Python manage.py test ratings. And it will take like maybe 30 seconds or so to do this. Uh, okay eight seconds, ha. and sure enough, it was good. Okay, so um, assert is not none, so the average should not actually calculate the none values. It should just leave those out altogether. Okay, so let's go ahead and test the playlist one now. I'm gonna copy this and do playlist.objects.aggregate and rating playlist ag. And of course, the actual average itself would come from the ratings underscore underscore value. Uh, that should give us that answer. So Python manage.py test and ratings. I'll let that run for a moment. And I'll also mention that we can absolutely test the actual average value. To actually test the average value, it will take a couple of steps to even get there. One of them being, do we actually just add in all of these values here? Like all of the potential values to some arbitrary item? And the answer is, well, yes, yes, of course, that's what we do. So we'll go ahead and do totals, as in rating totals, so self.rating totals. And this is gonna be this value here. So let's go ahead and give it the rating value. So rating val equals to that. I'll set that in here. And then I'll also add it to self.rating totals. We'll just append that rating value right here. Okay. So now that I've got that, this is a list of items that should give me some sort of rating. So inside of my test rating aggregation, this value, whatever this value is, should be equal to this value this rating total value divided by this rating count. So the entire sum of that. So let's go ahead and calculate that sum. So the average would be these rating totals divided by whatever that is. So coming back in here. So um, past values equals to self dot. Well, let's give it a total sum. Let's just call it total sum equals to the sum of self.rating totals, and then 
past average is equal to the total sum divided by the count that we had, which was this rating count. And I'll go ahead and do self dot rating count times 1.0, just to make sure we're getting proper decimal numbers. Okay, so we've got our total sum. And now what I wanna do is do self dot assert equal the past average with the, let's call this actually DB average. And I'm actually gonna print those things out because I do wanna see what we come back with on those ratings. And of course the other test actually went successful, that's great. So I, I think there's actually a fairly good chance that this is not going to work out the way I'm hoping for it to. Uh, because we get a, oh yes, of course, we get a none type in here. Uh, that's a good sign that shows me that that's incorrect. Um, so let's go back and scroll up and only add, append it if it's not none. So if rating value is not none, then we'll go ahead and append it. And that actually brings in another question of, is it going to go based off of the count in total or the length of the running totals uh, for the average. So I'm actually going to change my passing average. Instead of it being the actual rating count, we will just do the length of self.rating totals. Uh, that way, I believe this should actually give us the, a more accurate picture of the ratings because when we do this aggregate, it should not take into account the actual none values. So we'll go ahead and save that, I think. We'll see, it's worth testing. That's why we test things. Okay, so now it's running and there we go. Uh, those are actually equal. That's a good sign. Okay, so cool. That actually worked out pretty nicely and we could keep running this and I think it will always work out pretty nicely based off of what we've got here. Uh, but of course this actual calculation may or may not be necessary. This is testing that our aggregation is doing the correct averaging, which I think it's fair to assume that it's going to, um, because usually these math problems don't actually have problems. But as you see, I could have easily made a mistake on this with that none value, right? So with that none value, it kind of puts a wrench into what's going on here. But as we also see, the average value doesn't take into account those none values. So perhaps our averages should be a little bit higher or a little bit lower depending on if there are none values because it's not necessarily a truly representation of what those averages would be. In other words, if I add the actual count of ratings and got the actual average from the actual count, it's gonna be a different number than this aggregation number. So you do have to keep that in mind when you are doing this. I think it's fair to say that the actual average rating should be based off of the actual numbers that are passed in there. And then for our own analytics that we want to check later, then we would see, oh, who removed their rating to nothing and not actually calculating that as a part of the average. It's kind of tricky as you see. Um, but anyway, so now we've got a way to aggregate our averages and also how to test said aggregation. How fun was that?